I, someone asked me how I started this particular piece and that dying rose was the beginning of this painting. And I did a drawing of it on this big board. And then I thought, well, now I have to do something with the negative space. So I started adding drawings, torn shapes, cut shapes, and just about anything, mixed media. There were a variety of different media in this one also. I was so. really struck in your video, which if people haven't seen it, they should, they should look at it um, on uh, YouTube and, or follow our Facebook page and you can find it there. Um, when you said, you know, I, I freed myself, mm -hmm. you know, I feel more free now to go wherever I want to go. I do. Instead of, and, you know, I, I wasn't aware that you were thinking about what other people expected of you or what other people yeah. were doing. I mean, I know that there's always... I think artists are always analyzing their work and analyzing yeah. why they're going in the direction they're going. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, um, you but, know, I was always a painter and then I spent a long time doing prints. And this uh, paper painting I started doing, it was the year I broke my arm and I was stuck in the house and I went online and took a paper painting class and learned how to make the little printed papers with um, jelly plates. And I did that just for fun. I thought it was fun making these jelly plate prints. And then she taught us how to do a underpainting. This was all online and it was just great. And she was a bold colorist too. So of course I connected with that. And so I started making papers and with a broken arm, I could make all the papers I wanted. <laughs> they, you roll the ink on the jelly plate and then on something, make some kind of texture or pattern or form. I would just make all these little papers. And then I had lots of things to work with. So I have a lot of little prints in my, yeah, well, in my studio. A big file. Organized by color, presumably. Organized by color, and that's it. I just have, you know, plastic bins, bins and yeah. I throw them all in there. Yes. Wow. So, but I do like the torn edge, you're right. When you, you can tear the edge so you see the white, and you can tear it so, so you, you don't, don't see, see the white. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so that's the story of that. Um, that's pretty good. And, you know, the one that I was looking at the one all the way down on this, the first one on this, uh -huh. which is, I was like, now that is mixed media. That is like, that's got chock everything. Full. <laughs> that one has everything in it. Yes, yeah. it does. Yeah. It really oh. does. Good. Well, having asked you uh, to the, how you freed yourself from other people's expectations, do yeah. you have artists that you, I, I know. Clay is one of your, yes. since that's your email. <laughs> yes, yes, I always admired Clay. And after seeing many of his works in the flesh, they always said something that you weren't supposed to do, like um, crayon under watercolor, or there were just all these rules. combinations that, yeah. that he had broken. And I thought, well, if he can break those rules, I can break the rules too. Yeah. And they're still fine. They don't appear to have deteriorated. Uh -huh. So um, yeah, that's... For me, that was a big thing to just say, go wherever you want to go. Yeah, that's huge. So it is. It is. I huge. mean, I don't think that's an easy uh, no. stance to come to. Yeah, it really wasn't because I kept thinking if I'm a printmaker, I should be a proper printmaker. I should yeah. do, you know, etchings and I should do things the proper way. And, and I did take an et uh, a printmaking class right after I retired. So I do have that. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, yeah. And, and you worked at Alexandra's studio, right? Equinox? Uh, not, as, not really. Oh, um, I worked with her at the university, but oh, I didn't I work in her studio. Oh, I haven't okay. done that. Okay. That's on the horizon. Though. Yeah. Well, good. definitely. Because we'll that's an that. exciting uh, space, I think, for yes. people to work on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, that's cool. I remember in your early work, you would sometimes throw in bugs and, oh, yes. You know. <laughs> <laughs> different insect parts and so forth. I'm so you've always done a, a little bit of collage. The one and that, additives that and Steve Stalker bought, it's on the wall here and it has the bright orange. I think it's still there. Um, there are many insect uh, wings in that and a uh, variety of um, natural, really natural elements. And Does that affect the longevity of the work? Well, you know, if you really if you let them really dry before you use them and then you use um, a good glue that's not going to uh, 
cause problems if you use something like white glue, like Elmer's glue or something like that, it pulls when, yeah. when it dries I and remember. so that's not a good thing to do um, do you use like matte medium or what do you use actually uh, many of them i discovered yes paste and yes paste is meant specifically for paper and to be um last forever what do i want to say archival archival yes it will not damage the paper so um yes you can use that that's very cool and can I delve into your childhood a little? And <laughs> were you a, oh, a kid that was always like doing little art projects? I was always making something. Making something, yeah. yeah. So I was either sewing or painting or, yes. It was, and my father and my grandfather were always making things. So it seemed very yeah. normal in the house to go somewhere and make something. Yeah. Great, great. And then and your years, what I've noticed in the gallery, and I don't know if this is true of you, is that people are art teachers, which mm -hmm. is a demanding job, I can yes. only imagine. And then when they retired, they were like, whoa, you know, and they <laughs> just flowered into, you know, doing some amazing work. I think you hit on it for me. I was always, uh, if I was going to teach a watercolor unit, I would have to go in my room and get out the watercolors and see all the possibilities and explore them. So I knew what I was talking about. And so that would get me all revved up for that medium. And then, you know, it was that way. I was always preparing a specific medium. And I did have a press appear in my art room later in my career. And so I did do prints with, with my uh, ninth and 10th graders and they had, had to print on the press and got them all excited and got me all excited too. I'd right. stay after school and do prints. But then so, you'd have a unit where you had to switch to something else. Yes. So you, it kind of get interrupted. Yes. You, well, you, yeah, you was, that's true. Yeah. But I think that's why I got interested in so many different media. I see. Yeah. 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 So it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I guess I should interrupt a, a little minute here. If people want to ask questions, um, you could do that in your chat box. Um, on the bottom of your screen, there should be a little chat thing. Um, and you can ask Martha questions. We'll, we'll get them to her. Um, and um, maybe that's like a little commercial here, just so I don't forget. Our next show is with Aubrey, and it's called Glances at Legacy. Did I do that right? I think that's Glances close. at Legacy, and I think it's an intergenerational kind of look, autobiographical. Um, which is very cool. And we're also doing a fifth weekend in April. Um, fifth weekend is where there are um, an extra beyond the four weeks. There's like an extra week. It happens every quarter. And sometimes we try to do some special event. And this special event, we're doing a weekend of art and Ukraine because we are all like, our hearts are in our throats about Ukraine. And so we thought this would be a great opportunity to do some uh, expressions about how that has um, really helped us, uh, how, how that's affected our art, sorry. Um, and they're gonna be um, on sale and that will go to a charity that's helping Ukraine. And that's the very last weekend, it'll probably be Friday and Saturday, possibly Sunday, one never knows, um, but any uh, supporting member or exhibiting member of the gallery can um, can join the show. So, are there more things I should say? I think that's that's there'll be more forthcoming for sure. So, so um, can you look forward and say what's your next big thing, or you just you want to keep going with this? Well, this has just gotten me so revved up. I'm I'm kind of annoyed that I have to stop and do other things now to catch up on other things in my life. But yeah. I'll be back in the studio just going forward. Just keep this. going. That's great. And yeah. see where it leads you. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. See where it leads yes, you. Yes, definitely. Because uh, you really are putting everything into these things, painting and collage mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. color and so forth. Can you talk a little bit about um, my friend over here, this little green this green guy. The green bird? The silly bird? The silly bird. That's it. Thank you. That green piece was from a collagraph that I did. And I did a bunch of collagraphs. And then I cut out, cut up some that never ended up being, you know, saleable. So I loved the, the colors in that. So I cut it out and I had it with my pile of papers. And 
thought I have to do something with this. So when I was playing with it, I thought I can turn anything into a bird. So yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Birds are simple forms, actually. So yeah. Well, you do them well, so I don't think they're that simple. But <laughs> yeah, you for saying that. Um, but nature is also extremely important to you, and you definitely your newish house is right in the middle of the woods. Right? Yes, it's, it's very woodsy where I live. And <laughs> I was telling Nancy, Nancy Ryan has a piece in the corner that I love and considering buying it, uh, the, the small one, because it's the pattern that goes, yeah, it's in the corner over there. Um, when I go out in the morning with my puppy, I'm always looking at the ground and yes. saying, wow, there's a painting. There's a painting. There's another painting. And it's the patterns. Mother yes. Nature makes patterns with things that are the same, but not the same. And right. when I looked at that, that made me think of the way I look at, you know, the ground and see yeah. patterns. So there's um, something wonderful about repetition in nature. Yes. That it's just like, just gobsmacking kind of you're like, whoa. Yeah. That's way cool. Yeah, it is. It's so way cool. Oh, we have a question. Do we have a question? Yes, we do. Could you talk about the bird that you have in the back piece? Oh, the bird flash? So, so we're going to look at this piece in the back of the gallery. Um, does it have a title? It does. It does, but it's Do not on there. It? Flash. <laughs> flash. Flash. That's what I named that. That was a, a leucistic robin that hung out in my yard for the summer. A what robin? Leucistic. Leucistic. Leucistic means that it's the species um, pigmentation is altered. Oh. And so he doesn't fit the profile. Right. I, I have, I think a Robin that you did that was. You, you have a Cardinal. Cardinal. I'm sorry. Yes. yes. That yes. was a different color. Yes. Yeah. And that happens more than you think. Yeah. In apparently nature. it happened twice. <laughs> twice <laughs> that I know of. Yes, that's right. <laughs> so yeah. And, and the Robin hung around all summer long and he was brown and black and white. And uh, Steve and I looked at him and kept saying, is that a robin? Because he sure doesn't have the right coloring for a robin. And when I looked up, um, what, are, what are the um, species that have no color? Um, I can't think of the word. Albino? Albino, yes. Yeah. So when I looked up albino robin, I saw all kinds of robins that looked just like oh. mine, that they have mixed coloring on them. So, and it <laughs> explained, leucistic is the term used for and there can be a leucistic, you know, deer or right. dove or anything. They just we had a leucistic, leucist, say it again. Leucistic, leucistic skunk in our neighborhood. Wow, a white skunk. You, oh, really? Yeah. Was Which, he totally white? Yeah. No, he was, then he would be albino. If well, he had on no, the bottom, he, he, he had had still little, had some black. He still had. Some but Sabachka was happy to go after it, no matter what it had. To. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. You can't teach a dog about skunks. No, no, you can't. Sorry. <laughs> you absolutely can't. Yeah. So, yeah. yes, I, it's, uh, someone tried to buy my, my um, piece with a uh, flash and I said, he's not for sale. And I thought, oh my God, I've really gone over the edge here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like him. But I don't want to forget him, you know? Yeah. And he was there all summer long. And the next summer, of course, I looked for him and yeah. he was not there. So speaking of not for sale, how important is it or what happens when you do sell a piece? Is that like get excited or you feel like, oh, I'm going to miss that? Or oh, you know, no. what do I, you do with stuff that you don't sell? Yeah, you know? I, I feel good about selling things. I didn't, you know, for a long when when you don't have much that's good in the beginning, you really don't want to sell it. But I, I love selling things. And the funny thing is a lot of the people who bought my work are friends and people who have thoughts that, that I share with them. So it makes me feel good. Yeah. And, and you can I, see the work. Yes. That's go right. Visit I, them. I can go visit. My you go work visit your I... work. <laughs> yes. yes. You, ha you have well, one. Yes, I like very I much. I have a, a couple in my, um, yeah, in my office, I have yeah. two. Um, and oh, I nice. was like, somebody interested in the gallery, a patient. And, and I said, well, this is the woman who has a show right now. And I, <laughs> and I said, she Just loves happens. birds. And then this one, you can see this. And I told, walked her whole, through the whole thing. And she yeah. was like, oh, this is wonderful. Yeah, I like, do fall for birds. I, I have piles of bird photos, uh, you know, in my studio that are waiting to be 
I was all ready to do a crow and I'm, I'm still working on how I'm going to do a crow because they're black. And so I've got to make some black papers or black metallic papers or something to, to express. Um, yeah. To express the crow. Cause I, I love and aren't crows. They a little bit shiny. Kind yeah. Of? Yeah. They do have a little bit of reflective quality quality. So, yeah. So Betsy's pointing to you. you. You could come close to us or I could give you my no, mic. I like you can move. Susan. Oh, remember. Oh, yeah, let's go, go, go let's, stand there because I love uh, this piece. Yes. Too. You stand on that side. Yes. This one I started right after Susan Kendrat passed away. And she always loved robins the best. There was no question about it. She was a bird lover, but she would talk about robins like they were, they were the queens and kings of the forest. And so I wanted to put a robin in there. And at one point when she was very ill, she came up in the studio with me and wanted to do the jelly plate prints. And she made her own jelly plate. That was Susan's way. I still have her jelly plate. And she went to the pharmacy and got all the stuff and made her own, own little jelly plate. And so we printed papers together. And this particular paper was one that she made and I, you know, you know who made things in your studio. You look and say, okay, that could be my blue paper. No, that was, that was Susan's. And so I had all these blue and green papers and um, I wanted to use them in, in this piece. And I, I wanted to think about Susan while I was making this. So I took my time. I took my time and thought about all the things we had shared over the years and talking about birds and shapes of leaves. You could talk with Susan about those things and she would be right there with you, yeah. you know, yeah. um, the way the colors look on the leaves at certain times of, of the day. So I really enjoyed doing that. And my, my son looked at it and he said, and it's nice that you put the ocean in the back because she liked to swim in the ocean. I said, yes, that's why I did that. <laughs> but, <laughs> so I didn't do it for that reason, but people see things when, when you tell them about right. them, they see things in there. Yeah, and you want to think they're being insightful. Yes. Even though you have no idea <laughs> what they're talking about. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but most of these papers were papers that I'd made. And this particular leaf, they're all over my yard. They're just tiny oak, oak leaves. Thing, yeah. yeah, and that's such a wonderful Matisse used that shape all the time, that um, oak leaf shape. I look at all, all these textures. And so these are... Some of them are, yeah, they're collaged on papers. And then you can see that I drew over them. Like this intense blue was a, a crayon that I have. So it's just so nice to think, you put down a flat color and think that's boring. Think, I can make it not boring. So, you know, just keep working on it. Yeah. I think that's a good thing to do. Okay, good. We have another question. Um, let me go look at it while you look at, at Martha. Um, I have a friend who started painting at 18 and now approaching 60, he still paints. Can you talk about how you went from painting to collage? Hmm. Hmm. Well, I had a lot of bad paintings in my studio <laughs> and I thought, but they all had parts that I liked. So I thought, I'm just going to tear them up and cut them up. Everything. So I had all these pieces to do something with and, um, I think anybody can just start collaging on top of a painting. If they're brave enough. If they're brave enough, yeah. Speaking of this one, I mean, you got a lot, a lot of collage in this one. Yeah, that one, that one's a little bit older. Oh, oh, four, yes. Yeah. And that one's got pieces. It's got the of, bugs. It's got it's my got favorite actual bugs in it. These are bug wings here, and. These are pieces of screen. I think they're from a screen door. And these are right. screen screening. And I think this is a red hawk feather, even though it's black. This right. one and this one. Yeah. Those are real feathers. Aren't they beautiful? They really are. Yeah. And the and did they have dots on them or you did the dots? No, the dots were on them. Really? I, I have a friend in um in Georgia. Who, when I was doing things with bugs, she would find dead bugs and put them in a box and mail them to me. So I had all these dead insects coming and they were great because they were dried out. They'd been in a box for a while. So, yeah. The good part about this is you get closer and closer and you're like, get lost. And then yeah. you back up a little and it just works, you know? 
That's... Yeah, and this was started it. This was part of a print that didn't turn out to be anything. And once again, I, just the shape, I thought, what could I do with that shape? Mm -hmm. Yeah, pot of flowers, pot of... But I liked my title the best, Flower Bugs. Flower Bugs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I thought it was a very inventive title, and I'm not really good at titles. So... Yeah, this is part of a, a watercolor that I did like a century ago. Um, they're, they're just parts of things. This is part of a watercolor. Um, so really your whole history is in, in your paintings. <laughs> yes, it is. And I'm it sure really you, you remember every single one. Well, I don't, but I, I should. I well, you remember re more than I don't most. remember where that one came from. Yeah. All right, so one out of 100 you didn't remember. Okay, we'll <laughs> let you off the hook. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All I, right, if there, anybody has any other questions, um, but I think we're, we're pretty close. Thank as you, you can see, I have no trouble talking. You don't, <laughs> and I'm impressed with that. <laughs> Once you turn the on switch, oh my gosh, applause. <laughs> rah, rah. Thank yeah. you so much. No, this you're has welcome. been great. You're welcome. I'm looking Thanks forward for to listening, everybody and visit the gallery.